Hi, I'm Charles Malachy, biologist and plant expert with Ivy Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint, and today we're going to be discussing the three, five, and ten different things you can be doing and looking out for when in your garden. Um, the first three, and the reason I grouped them was your first three are your most important, your top five, and then your top ten things you should be doing, and I kind of put them in priority, and again, this is my opinion, and I'm here to share these with you, and if you have any thoughts or concerns you can actually write those in the notes and I'll try to integrate those into future videos as well so the first three things what do plants need what should you be looking for when you're in your garden and I actually brought this question up to my um, six-year-old daughter yesterday and um, and I shared that question with her and I'm like so what are the three things plants need and she started going down the list and she's like plants need water and they need sunlight and, and then she hesitated and I'm like, well, think about this. If your pet, I mean, so the example we came up with and that helped her get on track was, I asked her, pretend that your plant is a pet. Imagine it's a dog or a cat or a bird or any other animal. I'm like, what are the three things you're gonna wanna do for your pet? And she said, well, first it's gonna need water. I'm like, correct, you gotta make sure you give your plants water. The other thing she, that she immediately said is food. I'm like, great, you gotta feed them. And I've actually got in front of me over here um, various fertilizers. So she said food and she immediately said, oh, food is fertilizer. And I'm like, exactly. So we're gonna talk about a couple different um, ways of fertilizing your plants. And I'm like, so what's the third thing that plants need? Like, what are you gonna to wanna to give your dog? And she's like, a dog house. I'm like, that's it. They need shelter. And that's what we've actually done with this avocado and with this plumeria plant and with this cutting of a eureka lemon um, that's already fruiting as well. Um, and what we've offered them is protection. And, and the protection they're getting is from a product called Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. I'll share this quickly with you and I'm gonna go into more detail later. But Ivory Organic, it's a 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint and it says the natural tree trunk branch barrier protection against damaging sunburn and insects and rodents and it's for use on your roses and fruits and nut trees ornamental trees and shrubs and it's a non-toxic environmentally safe and organic product and this comes in three different colors I've got a white as well as a green and a brown color and it basically comes with a um, paint powder that's in there as well as an oil vial that pr provides the protection against the insects and the rodents. And if you zoom in over here, you can actually see that this plumeria was actually coated with the Ivory Organics white. And we did that when we transplanted it from the pot into a larger size pot. And you can see from the last time we did the plumeria video, and I'll actually put the link down below, you can see it's now gone into bloom and it's um, providing these very fragrant blossoms. And keep in mind, plumeria are usually more fragrant in the evenings than they are in the morning and afternoons. The um, other plant I have here as well is my Eureka lemon. You can see the lemon over here. And this here is coated with the Ivory Organics green. And I'll just spin that around so you can actually see the green coat of paint that we've got against the tree trunk. Citrus are very susceptible to sunburn. So we've actually got the tree trunk that's exposed to the most light protected against sunburn. And then the last thing I've got here is my um, Haas avocado that we just installed just a few weeks ago. And um, I know there's a video link on this as well, so I'll actually include that in the um, comments below. So you can actually watch and follow to see how we actually prepare this. But you can see we covered it with the Ivory Organics white paint along the tree trunk and branches. And then we actually sprayed the entire plant as you can actually see by um, zooming in on these leaves. This is actually um, a solution with one or two teaspoons in a spray bottle and that basically coated and it helps keep the plant cool especially since we install, install this in the summer months. When it comes to planting plants, the best time for planting your plants is in the spring or in the fall. Um, but again, our timing was now and Ivory Organics provide the plants with that shelter that plants can benefit from. So the first step, when you're coming out and visiting your garden, let's talk about water. And I'm actually gonna turn on the watering system here so you can actually see how this plant actually gets watered. So if you come a little closer, you can actually see that this is actually being watered in this watering zone. It's basically watering the entire root zone. Um, you can see below as well that there's some organic matter. This is some you know, onions that were left from behind. 
These are, this is some of the leaf mold, which are from the leaves that have um, fallen off the plant. And then all of that is actually feeding the soil, soil microorganisms that'll then be benefiting the plant. Um, we're basically watering a zone around the plant to actually encourage the earthworms, the beneficial nematodes and bacteria to all thrive and to actually help support and invigorate this tree to actually um, grow to um, a great start. Let me show you another sprinkler issue. You're now gonna go So here we are now next to one of our Meyer lemons. <clears throat> this is a Meyer lemon on a standard rootstock. It's only in its second year right now. But if you zoom in a little closer, you can actually see um, the newly developed fruit. And then below, you can actually see the fruit that was set um, from the spring bloom. And here we are now in the month of August. And now take a look at the sprinklers. So it's watering this zone. All of these are actually um, tropical milkweed. And even though milkweed is um, a wonderful addition to have for supporting the monarch butterfly, it's the wrong variety to be growing. And I've done a video on that and I'll put the link down below. But all of these are weeds and we're actually gonna pull these up and leave them in this zone. So in regards to something else to be doing, it's weeding, but we'll get to that later. Um, but the goal is to remove all of these seedlings. And there's a million of them in the backyard and I'll explain again in the other video, and you can actually see the link down below if you want to see why I've actually just removed those. But in regards to the watering, it's only watering this part of the tree. So what I need to do ultimately is actually get the sprinkler either a little closer or a little higher and actually increase the spray zone to watering the root ball. Because right now I'm only watering half of it. So what I'm doing when I'm actually here in the garden and after usually you know, I finished watering is I'll actually have to now water this side of the plant and make sure um, this process I actually repeat at least once every week throughout the spring, summer, and early fall. And just to make sure you're actually soaking your plants. Your citrus are actually drought tolerant plants, meaning that they need very little water. So when you're actually watering your plants, it's more important to actually do a thorough, deep watering of your citrus trees and only to do them um, once a week and sometimes maybe even once every 10 days but in the hottest summer months that we're here in August where we're having 90s and 100 degree days you may need to water your plants maybe twice a week and these plants aren't in ground it's actually partially in the ground and it's on a raised wall with a lot of um, drain holes so it's kind of a blend of in ground and being a potted plant as well with the conditions that it's in and potted plants always need more water than in ground plants so we're just making sure that we water the entire root zone so Step one of my um, top three things to be doing, make sure you're actually properly watering your plants. Make sure you're watering the entire root zone. So when you see your sprinkler is going, sometimes the sprinkler might be watering with a lot more pressure. Sometimes the um, sprinkler changes in regards to its amount of pressure and therefore it's watering a different area. Maybe it's watering too much, too little. Keep our eyes out on watering. And that's actually my first tip. Let's go on to tip number two. So tip number two, feed your plants. So the second thing of my top three things you should do for your plants, we just discussed watering. Number two is feeding your plants. If you have a pet in your backyard, if you've got a dog, a bird, a, a fish, a cat, you got to make sure you feed them every day. Um, but unlike 
your pets, you don't need to feed your plants every day. When it comes to feeding your plants, it's recommended that you feed them no less than three times a year. The three critical times for feeding your plant is in the spring, and in the summer, and in the fall. And if there is a way to balance your feedings or to you know understand why those three months and not the you know the year round, and the reason is the plant's metabolism is fastest in the summer. It warms up in the spring, peaks in the summer warms down in the fall, and actually goes, most plants go into dormancy. Even if they're evergreen plants, they still go into a typical dormancy period during the winter, cooler months. So the only time you actually need to be feeding your plants is when the plant's metabolism is active. So again, spring, summer, and fall. But now that you know when to feed your plants, what do you feed your plants with? And I've got here a few products to help you so that when you go to your local nursery, you know what to get your hands on. And what I'm gonna start off with is this product. For doing a liquid feed, I've got fish fertilizer. This says 511, and it's like, what do the numbers mean? And most people don't understand that the numbers are actually the percentage of elements, and these are your macronutrients, or your most important nutrients you gotta get for your plants. Are Your first number is always gonna be nitrogen, your second number is always gonna be phosphorus, and your last number is going to be potassium. And nitrogen is very important for plant growth and for greening. The second number is more important for flowers and fruit. And the last number is more important for root development, disease resistance. So we're looking at you know a product that's heavily leaning towards plant growth and less towards flowering, fruiting, and, and disease resistance. So it's important to actually have a balanced product. A better product would be a 555 or a 333. Um, but again, this does have its benefits, especially early in the season. And if your goal is to get some um, quick green growth, um, you can actually use a fish fertilizer. Um, you know, And it's typically one or two tablespoons. You can read the directions with a gallon of water. And you water your plants, and you're going to probably have to repeat that about every two to four weeks throughout the growing season. But this is one supplement that's excellent for plants. Another here is a product like this, and this is called Organic Neptune's Harvest, and it says fish and seaweed fertilizer. And take a look at the numbers here. It says two, three, one. So the focus of this product is actually on fruiting and flowering. So we can actually combine this product, which actually has more um, phosphorus in it, with the fish fertilizer to actually create a more balanced product. So that's one idea for when making your liquid feed for your plants. Another organic way to feed your plants, and here's a product made by Espoma, and the ratios on this are 3, 4, 4. And that means 3% nitrogen, 4% phosphorus, and 4% potassium. And again, this is more of a balanced product. It's um, granular and will actually last in your soil for about three months, which is will get you from spring to summer and from summer to fall. So a product like this, you can actually put around your plants. This here says it's designed more so for vegetables, but you can get something that's also good for your fruit trees. Um, and the goal again is you're trying to feed your soil microorganisms. You're trying to do things organically to feed your earthworms, to feed your beneficial bacteria, to feed your nematodes, um, to do all of those things. And that's something that only organic fertilizers can do. Another product here, and this is designed more so for um, trees, Organic Plus Fruit Tree Fertilizer. Um, if we turn around over here, I'm trying to find the percentages, but we can actually read it right here. So 4% nitrogen, 5% phosphate, 4% potash. So a uh, 4, 5, 4. So again, a pretty balanced um, fertilizer. And then it also contains um, bacillus, which is bacteria. It also contains mycorrhizae, which are a fungus. And imagine this, you've actually got a mushroom. Um, if you've got a mushroom that's actually grown in your garden, the mushroom is just, you know, just like those mushrooms that you see on your pizza, but those mushroom roots can travel hundreds if not thousands of feet. And it creates a network that actually networks all of your plants in your garden. So uh, to have mycorrhiza, and they are actually naturally occurring, but some of these organic products actually have them added. And I'm not too sure about how well it stores on the shelf and handles the temperature differences between, you know, the transportation and the air conditioning and the heating. Um, you know, and the warm weather is depending on where it's stored. So, 
but your garden already has all of these things. And by actually growing organically, you're gonna be feeding the beneficial bacteria, the beneficial mycorrhiza, the beneficial fungus, which is the same thing, um, the beneficial earthworms. You're basically gonna be feeding the life in your garden to ultimately feed and support your plants. So consider growing things organically. Another product, a couple more I wanna show you that are organic. Here's a Job's product. And again, this says for um, bountiful vegetables and these are spikes. You can actually just stick a few spikes around your plants. And take a look at the ratios on this one, a two, seven, four. So just a little bit of growth with the nitrogen, seven, 7% 7 phosphorus. So a lot of a percentage grow, you know, going towards the flowering and the fruiting, 4% um, phosphorus for disease resistance um, and strong root development. So um, really designed towards giving, as it says over here, for bountiful vegetables, as it's got a lot of energy that's going towards the fruit development and less towards um, the plant growth. And then the last thing I got, and this is kind of a hidden secret, and I did a video on this as well, and I'll put the link down below so you can actually see um, all the details about the benefits of Epsom salt. But the, the, the key thing here is, um, Epsom salts are made out of magnesium and sulfur. This is not table salt, not sodium chloride. This is uh, magnesium sulfate. And what it does is actually provides your plant with two extra micronutrients or less important nutrients, but still very important for, as it says over here, vigorous lawns and flowers and plants and vegetables and trees. And, you can, and the directions on here and read your own um, labels, but you can generally walk around your garden and add you know, one or two um, tablespoons to a gallon of water and, and water your trees and water your vegetables and, um, and, and basically have a much healthier um, garden by making sure you got those micronutrients in your garden as well. So we just talked about organic fertilizers. Now, when you see a product like this, and even though all of these name brands usually have their organic um, versions as well, but take a look at the difference between a chemical fertilizer I don't have to touch this, I'll scoop it out so you can see it. Let me get that in the light for you so you can see. But you know, it's shiny blue, chemically you know, driven. It has, let's take a look at the percentages here. Um, a 24, let me double check that, that's such a high number. But that's it. So it's a 24, 8, 16. Um, an incredibly high number, but again, this, this, these high numbers can only be achieved chemically. So 24% nitrogen, 8% phosphorus, and 16% potassium. By using a product such as this on your plants, you're telling the plant to actually use chemical to replace the nitrogen that's going into the DNA of the plant, um, to use the chemical phosphorus that's ultimately gonna end up in your fruits and your flowers that your family is gonna consume and to use the phosphorus that's again chemically driven to go into you know, the root health and support. But pretty much all the parts don't just uniformly go into one place. They're all necessary. These are just the micronutrients and then you also need the, mi the micronutrients as well. But aside from the fact that you've got chemically driven elements that are gonna go into the foods and the leaves and the root structures and the stems of the plant, you're also not feeding your so soil microorganisms. So you're not completing um, you know, a healthy symbiotic relationship between your fertilizers and the living organisms in your soil that will ultimately provide you with the healthiest and strongest um, plants in your garden. So here's one product that is a chemical fertilizer. Um, another thing that chemical fertilizers, um, another thing that your organic fertilizers offer is that it actually warms the soil. By actually putting organic, <clears throat> Wait two seconds, hopefully it's gonna pass. It feels like it's circling. Let's go. So another benefit of actually using your organic fertilizers, all of these over here, is that it actually also warms the soil. You're actually breathing life into the soil. It's increasing the amount of um, microbial activity, there's a lot more action basically happening in the soil and all of that life is actually gonna warm the plants and warm the soil and actually help further increase the metabolism of the plant. That's something, again, a chemical fertilizer cannot do for your plants. 
This here is another um, chemical fertilizer as, as well called Osmocote. And if we take a look on the back again, this says it's a 15.92, so 15% nitrogen, 9% phosphorus, 12% um, potassium. So, and it's also got all of these micronutrients, which is fantastic. But again, a chemically derived fertilizer. And the last over here is a product made by Bandini. And the cool thing about this is I love the fact that it's a balanced fertilizer, but again, this is chemical. If you actually put this on your fruits and vegetables, you're eating the nitrogen that's coming from a chemical factory rather than actually getting your, um, your nutrients that are ultimately supporting your fruit health and your family's health from an organic source. Yalla. So then we also started off the video. So we talked about water, we talked about food, and now we're gonna talk about shelter. We started off the video talking about Ivory Organics, three in one tree guard paint, and the benefits it offers your plants. And what I have here again is I've got my plumeria over here. I also wanted to share this cutting, which actually came from the video we did on that plumeria plant about a month ago. I'm gonna put that link there as well, but you can see we coated it with the Ivory Organics three in one tree guard paint. But what we're gonna do here next is I'm gonna show you the benefits of actually Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint on, on your prunings as well. If you actually go to prune your plant, you're actually um, exposing the plant to more sunlight getting into the lower branches and lower trunks. Um, and as well as that prune surface is also now an entryway for um, insects such as termites and beetles to actually enter the heart of the wood or the center part of the plant. Come and let me show you a few examples. Gonna have to get on this side. So we're over here next to my Oro Blanco grapefruit. You can see that it's actually quite productive over here. But if you zoom in a little closer, you'll see that on this branch that we pruned, and it actually died, so we actually cut it down, we actually coated it with the Ivory Organics, and this now creates a seal to prevent any wood boring insects from getting into the heart of the wood until the plant actually heals and seals over. Let me show you one other plant as well. I'm bored. Try not to put that in the video. What? Your comments. Yeah, but you're not gonna... You have to cut. There'll be a thousand people watching this tomorrow. Yeah, but you have to cut and paste. Here we are now again. Um, this here is my bear's lime. If you actually zoom in over here, you can actually see the first fruit. We just installed this about six months ago, and we're expecting a lot more in regards to fruit production on this plant by next year. But in the meantime, we wanna take care of this plant. We wanna make sure that it grows and gets established and gets as bushy and as compact as possible to support the most amount of fruit. And what I wanna show you in here, and this is not a, a prune that I did, but when I actually purchased it from the nursery, if you zoom in over here, you can actually see a branch that was actually um, it seems like it was ripped out of the plant. And that's actually another opening that we're actually gonna close here right now. So I've got my Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Tree Guard Paint. We've already added water before the video. I'm just gonna stir it to make sure all the oils get into, into the contents. And then we're just gonna take our brush here and we're just gonna fill that in. Like so. And that's it, and now it's sealed. If you take a look, we actually painted this tree about four or five months ago. And being that it's organic, it does break down, but it's still offering um, you know, the lightness that's actually protecting the plant from sunburn if you look all the way down. And we, co we coat it all the way down to the base of the plant. 
and take a look at the difference between like this branch over here that's coated and this branch over here that's actually a new, a new branch that's grown since. One other thing I can share with you is on the hottest days we actually even coated the leaves as well. And you can take a look at that as well. And then since then it's developed all this new growth as well. Over here. And over here. So the importance of covering your pruned branches is very important. There's actually a split in regards to research in regards to the importance of actually painting your trees. But this isn't painting your trees. Paint actually has a lot of preservatives in it that actually has, you know, um, ingredients that actually have algicides in it and fungicides in it and all of these preservatives to allow the paint to serve, you know, to last for decades after decades. Um, this product is an organic product. It's an organic paint powder with an organic, um, with organic oils, it's a member here of a member, it says over here on the label, of the Organic Trade Association as well. And, and I'm now going to treat you guys and take you to the Los Angeles Zoo, which is right around the corner um, from us. So you can actually see some more trees that have actually been pruned. And the beetles and the termites have worked their way in. And, um, and these plants are actually going to definitely have their lives compromised because they haven't been taken care of immediately after the prune. And I'm going to show you the importance of, uh, of actually protecting and coating your plants following um, any pruning. And I'll show you some sunburn, I'll show you some insect damage, and I'm going to show you some other issues. So follow me, we're going to the Los Angeles Zoo. So here we are now at the Los Angeles Zoo, and we're going to be um, now demonstrating some trees here that are suffering and can actually benefit from the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 tree garden. Paint. We are under the shade of an oak tree, and you can see here that they just made a prune. That happened within the last year. And take a look at this other cut over here. And so far the trees actually healed well. You can actually see on the outer part, that's the bark. And then right under the bark layer is the cambium tissues that would lie right under the bark. And the rest of this is the supporting wood structure. But so far this tree is healthy, but I'm gonna show you what's gonna happen over the next um, few years if this is not, not actually coated with a product such as this Ivory Organics 3-in-1 tree guard paint. When it ultimately closes, it'll actually end up as something like this. This here is actually a wound that has um, since closed. And here's another one as well that was also a pruned branch that has since closed. But I'm going to show you what's going to happen now over the next 5, 10, and 15, and 20 years as we go through and view some other trees here at the zoo. Under the shade of what appears to be a crepe myrtle tree. You can see those beautiful pink flowers up above. The plant seems to be in good health, but take a look more closely on what's going on. Before you get any closer, you'll notice that the shadow of the tree is over here. So the sun has been shining on this side of the tree for its entire life. And if you zoom in a little closer, you'll actually see that the entire tree is actually burnt from about 10 to 15 feet high all the way down to the base of the tree. And if you take a look, take a look at all those cracks. And the only living wood that's actually supporting this tree is actually on the back side. And if you come around the other way now, you'll actually see that this is actually the living this is actually the bark, and right under the bark is the cambium tissues that are supporting the waters and the sugars that are then flowing and supporting all of those flowers and leaves um, and branches up above. But without this cambium tissue, this tree would otherwise be dead. Um, to actually preserve this plant and give it the longest life, what we'd need to do if you come around again is take a product such as this Ivory Organics. This actually is a color brown, so it comes in the green and white colors as well, but we'd basically coat this um, in the Ivory Organics product to basically keep the insects and the um, bacteria um, and wood boring insects such as beetles and termites from getting into this wood and shortening the life of this plant any further. There's one, one other tree I'd like to share with you as well. Follow me. So here we are now under the shade of a mulberry tree. If you take a look, it's a beautiful looking tree. Um, provides a nice canopy, very vigorous and fast growing tree. But when you actually go to prune the branch, this was actually pruned at least five, possibly 10 years ago. But when they pruned it, you can see this is the cambium tissues and it's actually starting to heal. But as it's healed because it wasn't protected, you can actually see that the wood boring insects, whether they're termites or beetles, have actually worked their way into the tree and are actually starting to consume the center of the wood. So even after this actually seals and, and, and closes, 
there's actually still gonna be insects that are trapped within the heart of this tree and continue to take away from the life and the age of this tree. So again, when it comes to pruning your trees, and if you've got exposed wood such as this, it's important to actually cover that with the Ivory Organics paint. I would actually go in and actually spray it and saturate it before um, putting a paint seal over it. Um, I hope you found um, this part of it informative, and now let's continue the next step. So I hope you've enjoyed learning the top three things that I recommend doing when taking care of your plants. We talked about water, we talked about food, and we talked about shelter. The top three things to be doing for your plants. If you've got the time, I'm going to be including the video link down below with the top 10 things you can be doing for your plants. And I hope you've got the time to, you know, watch that as it's got a lot more helpful tips on what it takes to have a successful and happy and healthy growing garden. Thanks again for watching and happy gardening.